So if we are right, after causing the plague at Bet Shemesh, which is down there in the low hill countryside of Judea, the ark was carried to this hilltop, to this hilltop who, whose Arabic name is Der El Zahar. It is above the Arab Muslim village of Abu Ghosh, yet it is identified with Kiryat Yarim. Kiryat Yarim, in the book of Samuel chapter 7, it is said that it was placed in that site for about 20 years, kept by Avinadav and his son Elazar in charge of it, until David finally takes it to Jerusalem. Hmm, what can be seen of all of this today? Well, let's poke around. Okay, I don't know if the camera catches it well enough, but there's actually quite a lot of pottery on the surface. Today this area is part of a Christian French monastery and these terraces are all cultivated for growing olives and maintaining the place. But on the surface one can clear, clearly see quite a lot of pottery shards indicating this site was inhabited intensively in ancient times. And this is where it gets interesting. Could there be also architectural remains from ancient times? Could there be remains from the 10th century or late 11th century, the time that the Ark was placed here? And actually that is exactly what new research is suggesting. Unfortunately today this area which was excavated was all covered up but when it was excavated in 2017, huh, here's another nice pottery shard, but being a surface find, even if I can estimate the date, it's worthless. You have to find it in context. But in 2017, excavations were carried here by the renowned Professor Israel Finkelstein from Tel Aviv University. He is conducting a lot of research relating to the biblical narratives and especially to the earlier parts relating to the 10th century, the kingdom of David and Solomon, or in his opinion, the legendary kingdom of David and Solomon. And one very interesting topic would be tracking here remains that relate to the time that the ark rested here. Okay, but let's get over this fence first so I can continue the vlog. Okay, here we go. And you know what? Let me show you what is visible here today. You'll find it very interesting that there's both an Old Testament and a New Testament combined sanctity of the place. And then I will revert to the research done here, and especially the interesting research done in recent years. Okay, first of all, on the very hilltop, you have a church. And the name of the church, I don't know if the camera catches it from this distance, A la Vierge Marie Arc d'Alliance. The official name of this place is La Notre Dame, Our Lady, obviously the name of Mary, but of the Arc d'Alliance, of the Ark of the Covenant. That is indeed an interesting combination. This church is combining the memory of the ark being placed here with another container of a holy item, with Mary. And there's actually a giant sculpture of Mary combined with the ark over the top. Wait till we get to a better angle to show you this. Unfortunately, since the pandemic broke out, 
the church itself is closed. It was built in the early 20th century. And when it was built, they found traces of a Byzantine period church whose white plain mosaic floor here at the entrance is still visible. Also inside you have a bit of the mosaic floor with some basic geometric designs, nothing fancy. And anyway, it relates to Christian times, to Byzantine times, which is a d another topic. And I have to say, we do not know for sure if the Byzantines necessarily venerated here the memory of the Ark being placed here. The sign today clearly combines the two. Look at this icon blocking the entrance today. Mary and Jesus. And beneath, the priest carrying the Ark and above it in Latin, Foederis Arca, the Ark of the Covenant. And above, you can see David on the left. Who is this? Elazar, Avinadav, Aaron, a priest relating to the veneration of the Ark. And this is also a place with quite a view. I started with the view towards the west, showing you, you could actually see Tel Aviv there in the distance, but the purpose was to show you the Philistine land where the Ark was placed among the Philistines for a while, in Ashdod, in Gat, in Ekron, and then in the city of Beth Shemesh. But after causing a plague even among the Israelites, it was brought here. Der el Azar, in Arabic, Der means monastery, Azar, Zohar, is perhaps preserving the memory of El Azar, who was in charge of this site, in charge, the custodian of the Ark. Furthermore, the Arabic name of this environment is Karyat el Annab. Okay, uh, the city of Annab, but the word city, Karyat, is preserving Kiryat, Kiryati Arim. The city of forests is the biblical name of this site, apparently. And here you can see still quite a few archaeological fragments. In fact, this looks to me like a milestone. There's some vague traces of writing on it. Very interesting. I know for sure that inside the church there is an inscription from Roman times mentioning the very Roman general that was in charge of Judea in the days that the 10th legion was conquering it and crushing the Jewish rebellion. But unfortunately the church is closed. It's just not going to be available to show you today. But the view, the view of Jerusalem is definitely out there and is spectacular. I hope the wind is not too high and the sound is still good. And here is a nice view of Jerusalem here the modern city in the distance this is a recent offering of Mary and baby Jesus uh, donated by Vietnam as the sign is saying there in the side and just imagine some 3,000 years ago the Ark of the Covenant resting here okay and now the big image hovering over the church shows exactly that amazing combination. I hope the camera captures this. Yes, you can see Mary holding baby Jesus, but they are standing on top of a box that has winged figures. <laughs> These are undoubtedly the cherubim here, zooming in. And so this is the Ark of the Covenant. And yes, the Christian dogma, the Christian presentation of this, is suggesting that the same box that contained the contract with the Lord can be quoted with the women that contained God's earthly messenger, Christ, combining the two in a very interesting way. But I'm here for the archaeology. And once again, the terraces around the hilltop that are now just used for growing olives and beautifying this area, 
may actually contain the answer to whether there was presence here in the Iron Age or not. And that is exactly what Finkelstein's team has investigated in 2017 and I think another excavation in 2019. Okay, how do we get down without tripping over? Okay, here, when I walked a few weeks ago, when I walked a few weeks ago with my friend Idan Geva, is where we found what we believe is traces of what the Finkelstein's team originally uncovered. Here you can see the first part of it. The foundation of quite a significant wall. and more of it up ahead. And this is where it gets interesting because according to Finkelstein's excavations, he was teaming up with a French university and he claims that there's actually clear foundation of a giant rectangular compound. And these are supportive walls of this compound suggesting that this was a place of significant religious function. Yes, like the Temple Mount in Jerusalem that had substantial walls in a rectangular form supporting them. Same thing occurred over here. The key question is what are the dates of these walls? And Finkelstein using a certain um, dating technique, OSL, not the classic dating system by pottery shards under floors, nor the system of dating by carbon 14th, but a rather new and somewhat debated dating system. Using that, he reached the conclusion that it dates to the 8th century BC, meaning it is Iron Age, but late Iron Age. And it's all part of his understanding that many of the stories appearing in the Old Testament are really compiled, created even, around the time of King Josiah. Maybe they're containing vague memories of earlier times, that, but there's a lot of political maneuvers and manipulation when it's put into writing. However, and I spoke to quite a few scholars. Most of the ones I spoke to do not agree with the method he used and definitely with his conclusion. And Gabi Barkai, a dear friend, which excavated here in the 1990s, told me clear, clear and cut, Danny, when I excavated here, I found 10th century pottery. And when Finkelstein excavated here, I came to visit him and I showed him 10th century pottery meaning there was presence here also in the early Iron Age, in the time just before the Ark was sent to Jerusalem. At the moment, that's all we can say, say. That's all we can show. More investigation is required to reach better conclusions. But one thing is for sure, the Ark did not stay here forever. Once David is king, is, has taken control over Jerusalem, he comes to Kiryat Yarim to take it to his new capital city. But something happens on the way. It almost falls from the wagon on which it's carried. The person who tries to stop it from falling, his name is Uzzah, and he dies instantly. So they decide to stop the parade 
and make a break and the ark is kept somewhere between here and Jerusalem at a place called Bet Ev Oved Edom Agiti. It's rested there, it's placed there for three months according to the text. And guess what? New archaeological research made in the context of building a new bridge may have found that site. <laughs> that is also fantastic new information relating to the Ark narrative. And if you want to see a full report on that site, make sure to hit subscribe and to get an alert for when my next vlog exactly about that site, the Tel Moza Temple site, will air. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. So long for now.